What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome to the One Hit Combo Podcast. This is going to be revolving around comic books today. Uh, my name is Koopa, and I'm here with the man System Psycho. What's up? And the man Josh. What's up? And uh, we're going to talk a bunch of different things we've got on the schedule here today. Um, I guess, uh, Psycho, why don't you go ahead and start it off. What are you interested in talking about first? Uh, let's start off with the Doctor Strange comic. Okay. So... This joint's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, okay. Um, so, you know, Doctor Strange has this new series, right? And before reading this comic book, you know, I'm, I wasn't, I, I wasn't really, I always thought Doctor Strange was just an off the wall character. He, he was just kind of weird for me, right? But the thing that brought me to this comic book mainly was the artist. Um, I don't know if you guys know the artist's name straight off the top of your head, but he was the artist that did, um, Generation X back in the day, and I really, really love this guy's art, and so that's what that's what attracted me to it. His name is what is his name? Aaron? No, the no. Yeah, Cello. Yeah, Cello. Yeah, Jason Aaron is uh, the writer. Yeah, he's the one writing it, and uh, yeah. it is very reminiscent of the old uh, Generation X joint, though. Yeah, definitely. And dude. I mean, with the whole like, I, I I always thought that was a little bit of a weird art style because it was the so dramatically different from everything that was going on at that time. Yep. <clears throat> like the only other different thing that was really going on was. Um, <sighs> Every now and then, an X Force comic would be drawn up in with that with a weirder style, and most most of the time it was X Factor, mm-hmm. like the when they were the like Havoc led '90s team. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. They had that that weird uh, animation also, but like well at the late '90s, yeah, the tail end of the X Factor, yeah, 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 yeah. Be- yeah. But I mean, it wasn't like that. That art was just so drastically different from everything else. But I always thought that the art from Generation X, while it was different, I always thought it was better. I mean, it was always yeah. dark, which was kind of weird. Yeah. Since it was a teenage storyline. Yeah. But um, I mean, for some of the adventures that they went on, it was pretty damn cool. Yeah. And and I mean, with this, I thought this type of art style for Doctor Strange was a little different, just because when I when I think of Doctor Strange, I think of something more like I don't know, not as cartoony. Yeah. Know, like the yeah. So you think about like um the volume two run. Yeah, some a little bit more along those lines. And so you know when 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 it went in this direction, I, I you know I was like I'll give it a chance, and it ended up being pretty cool because the stories are just. I think the story is pre- pretty pretty good. It, it kind of gives you a little bit of like you know who Doctor Strange is and what he does and in his world and all this and and see that's good for me because I've never actually read yeah, any of the old Doctor Strange. Much, like, yeah. I knew about Doctor Strange from what I've read about Doctor Strange and all his cards and stuff from back in the day. Yeah. Right. But I mean, honestly, I'd never read an old Doctor Strange book. But just reading this series makes me want to check out the old Doctor Strange stuff. Yeah. But uh, like you said, I think the story in line in this joint is very very interesting. And I think the fact that he is like these legitly like friends and hangs out with all these other like major mages in like the Marvel like community, which is fucking weird as shit. Yeah. They're going to that little tavern that only no, the, the bar with no doors. Find, yeah. Yeah. yeah and you see scarlet witch is there and shaman is there yeah. uh magic is there half the time it's yeah. just like what the hell every cool. major magic user in marvel shows up in this comic book or will probably show up in this comic book at one point yeah absolutely yeah i see i'm like i had like a little bit of different background uh, with it because you know I, I grew up being a doctor strange fan you know and then when this new series was coming out I was really interested in, in jumping on to all new, all different Marvel. You know, I, I, I thought it was, it was an interesting concept that they were running with. And what, what I was really weird about wanting to do with this series was that I wasn't sure how it was going to play out. And then during the, um, Secret Wars, Jason Aaron was re, was writing, uh, Weird World. And so I really got into Weird World and I really liked the way that he liked, like his storytelling. So then when I found out that he was writing this book, I was, like, sold at that point. <laughs> so, like, I got in it, and I knew that, like, there was going to be some strange uh, some strange events that are going on, of course, because it's Doctor Strange. Of course. But, <laughs> you know, I also knew that, like, the way that Jason Aaron's, like, um, writing style is, is that it would, like, come together. And, man, like, honestly, within, like, the second issue, and I know that we've made the joke about it, that don't open the refrigerator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like don't, whatever you do, do not open my refrigerator. You know, like, that kind of shit. And 
and that's what I was expecting, and that's what we got. So, I mean, I, I've really been entertained by this book. Yeah. I, I think it's a really cool storyline, too. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they're killing off all the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, yeah, that's some yeah. major yeah. shit right there. Yeah. And, and, just like, and just like little things like when that one, when the girl that, you know, is with Doctor Strange, she sees, like, a book, and, like, the books are dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was like, so it's like um, the books are dying, Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. Don't the know what's she, going on. The fact that she shows up, and she's got a mouth on her head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, it's like a little, and, like, nobody can see her, really, right? Is that how it was? Nobody can really see no, like, certain demons. No, nobody can see the demons. Like, yeah. You can't see the demons. The demons just are all around us. Everywhere. All, everywhere, all, all the day, time, every day. We just... We just ignore them because we're not like in tune to it, but everybody else that has like mystic powers can actually see them. You know? Exactly. And the plethora of just demons that are like, or magical demons that are running around trying to escape this force that is killing off all the Sorcerer Supremes. <laughs> yep. Like, it's just, it's like, it's just psychic leeches yeah. and shit like that. You're just like, yeah. what the fuck? I would have never thought of that. Yeah, I was like, saying, like, cool things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, cool. it's pretty, pretty cool little monsters. And like you said, uh, the, the, the craziness with the, with the books in the library and of course the fridge and all the different doors in this man's house leads somewhere weird. It's just like, yep. I, I, I mean, I should have anticipated something like this, oh, but absolutely. like, I just had no clue that this man's house was that weird i mean like i mean then again like i said i've never read dr strange i've only right. whenever i'm have seen people in his sanctum sectorium is because they've come to him looking for him yeah, and then they're yeah, there I for agree. like five minutes what, and then they roll yeah, the fuck out that's the same thing with me every time i read about dr strange it's always in the big marvel event yeah he'll come to like save the day or something like that and other than that i don't you know yeah, yeah. i think the last time i read about dr strange i mean it was an old series it was uh it, an alpha flight and all of them I think it was like North Star and Aurora flew from like Alberta, Canada to New York real fast to try and get Doctor Strange to get his help or something like that. Damn, so, that's serious, huh? Yeah, man. So yes, yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, like straight like this series for Doctor Strange so far, I think it, it's a really good series for anybody to get into. You know, I mean, like like even if you're not a doc, and I guess that I'll say that I feel like this is the best Doctor Strange story so far for me because it is so approachable. Mm -hmm. Like, I have been able to tell other people that I know and I talk about comic books with, and I'll say to them, hey, have you read the new Doctor Strange? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, very similar to what yeah. you guys are saying, like, I never really messed with Strange, I don't know mm -hmm. about getting into it, and I always say to them, you can pick up issue number one, mm -hmm. they give you the backstory mm -hmm. in yeah. a page. Like, it's yeah, just like a panel literally. of a page that you basically get his origin like, I'm story. Doctor Strange, this is my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, and then it just jumps in, and it, it's got comedy, it's mm -hmm. got the action, it's got, it's very well paced, like, mm -hmm. I have not felt that any of these books have drug on. Like, yeah. I feel like, I pick it up and before I know it, I'm done and I'm yeah, and I'm, I'm ready for the, for next, the next one. one. Well, see, I I kind of I kind of started out by pacing myself because I I think issue three was out mm -hmm. by the time I got issue one. Oh wow! Okay. So I was like, all right, you know, when I come back next time, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up issue number two. I was there like two days later. <laughs> I was just like, all right, let me go ahead and get issue number two. And then um, by then, I think issue four had just came out, and I went back, and I got like three and four at the same time. No, I got three because they didn't have, they had ran out of four, and I went to another store mm -hmm. to get four. That's how bad I wanted four. Wow. So, um, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this coming out, and it's 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 really strange for me to just admit that I'm really enjoying a storyline that does not involve mutants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And it's like, honestly, obviously, the, the, the time timing of the release is good because the Doctor Strange movie is going to be coming out this year so I'm sure they want to put that out just so people can get more familiar with Very it true. Absolutely. and we still don't have a synopsis of actually what that movie is about yeah uh, we, we really don't I have seen a new photo of Cumberbatch in the Doctor Strange suit. Yeah, yeah I've seen that too. I think that he's, I think he's going to do terrific in the role I, I really so, do. Dude. I mean when you like see you haven't watched uh, Sherlock but if you watch Sherlock and you see how his personality is in there, like, and then think about reading this series of Doctor Strange, it will, like, come together for okay. you. You'll, you definitely will will see where he'll fit in and in that. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes. I, I really have a feeling, too, though, that the movie is going to kind of somewhat incorporate some of the elements that they're going with the storyline now. Oh, so. with this current storyline? I think so. I mean, it'd be interesting to see a movie's, a movie's <laughs> take on, like, 
the main antagonist of the storyline. Right. But I mean, also, like, I feel like with the Doctor Strange movie, this might be a little bit much to start with, mm. just because, bam, you're killing off all the Sorcerer Supremes. So everybody's going, okay, what the fuck is the Sorcerer uh, yeah. Supreme? So then you're right. going to have to explain mm. that you're going to explain why he's the Sorcerer Supreme and that there's a hundred billion of them across all realities and all that other dumb shit that goes on. So, you know, yeah. it's just a whole lot of mess. I think, I, I, if they, if they, they might use elements of this storyline, who knows? But, yeah, like, absolutely. I don't think the main antagonist is going to be the main antagonist. Like of the first, probably gonna be Dormammu, dude. No, honestly, I think it's just gonna be Baron Mordo. I think think, uh, Dormammu's a little too big to just bust out the first movie. That's true. He'll probably end up being like one of those like Flash characters at the end. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like the Thanos John at the end of the first Avengers. You'll you'll get him at like the little, uh, the little like hidden hidden scene at the end of the credits. I'm coming for you. (laughs) (laughs) Dope. well yeah man it's a good comedy yeah i'm gonna absolutely. keep reading it yeah definitely interesting I, well, well, one watching. last thing no i really didn't like the the artists of the last two so far, what issues are they? Five and six? Four and five. Four and four, five. Yeah. I don't like that artist, dude. I was like, man, go back to the other artist. But they are going to go, they are going to revert back to the, uh, the, uh, the, the cello and guy. I don't, I don't mind the cover art for four as, as much. Like five, I, I feel like five is a little unoriginal, but like yeah. compared to the rest of these joints, yeah. like, yeah. yeah, they're all pretty, like, out there yeah. if, with the exception of four and five but yeah. four is just like okay i'm hanging with my g's you know like whatever <laughs> yeah. we toast in but like the other ones are just random demonic things going on yeah. so issue, issue two and three definitely caught my eye on the stand oh yeah that, that they, was the they, one yeah that two especially the, i like two because you see the first one in the first one where he's got like the battle axe you know and you're like okay what the fuck is going on here like what they're making like dr strange a barbarian <laughs> right you know, i really do like, like the yellow really background though it stands out you know and oh yeah, yeah Excited. When I well, when I saw number one being a Doctor Strange fan, mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck this!" I, I was like, "I really don't want to read this." You know? <laughs> I was like, "They made Doctor Strange like basically like Conan the Barbarian, like going to be Conan garbage. the yeah. Barbarian." You know, but I was like, "I have to read spells. it. I have to read it." You know, and I picked it up, and I was like really happy I did. But then when I saw issue number two, issue two, with Colin and then I was too. like, "All yeah. right, like yeah, this is Doctor Strange. Just, oh, yeah. This that is what I'm waiting right. for. Like a monster coming out of the refrigerator." <laughs> 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 that's what I, that's what the kind of shit that I've been looking. And young, for. the joint that kills me. I mean, I guess this dude is so used to it, but the, the nigga, the nigga Wong, is that his name? <laughs> yeah. Yo, my my man is a straight G. He's just like. So how are we going to do this today, Doctor Strange? Like, <laughs> That's right. Dude. There's demons coming out of the refrigerator. The books are exploding. <laughs> I mean, there's dragons in the hallway. How are we handling this? Like, like everyday occurrence. Just straight yeah. calm with it. And then he's in there chefing up like like lizards and shit oh, for this dude, man to eat. Like the food that he makes strange oh. is so ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I forgot man. about that. Dude. That drink is nasty as all hell. I will <laughs> tell you one thing though is that like I kind of do feel sorry for Strange. Because you see the responsibility that he does have in the context of the universe. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you see the shit that he's got to deal with in order to be that. Yeah. You know, that, and that's what's kind of funny about this book is that, you know, it's so multi-layered like that. Like, you get your, like, I was saying, you get your action, you get your comedy, you get that. But the, the thing is, like, it's a very, uh, the tone is exactly what you were just yeah. describing. The tone of the story kind of gives you that dramatic piece as far as the character of Doctor Strange. Yeah. But at the same time, the tone in the writing of that character is still fun. Exactly. And it's still, and it's he still, still cracks engaging, jokes all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it really, it really moves along. I mean, I don't know if you guys are reading uh, Invincible Iron Man at all or not. No. Nah. But like, um, uh, Brian Michael Bendis is writing that one, and uh, there's Doctor Strange comes into that. Oh into that thing. Well, the thing that's really funny in that is that like uh, Tony Stark says to Stephen Strange, he's like, "Dude, we're mustache bros." You know, so oh, like, like they got like this that. ongoing thing. Like they do kind of like the same. They do yeah, and, it, and it's like the it's that's the thing that I think is engaging about this all new, all different uh, Marvel. It, you know, for all the criticisms that you hear from people that are like, oh, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Yeah. One thing that I can definitely say is that they're really taking the tone of the comedy aspects from the movie 
and fitting them in the books and doing it without making the books seem corny. Yeah, because I actually yeah. I had no, is Doctor Strange always been a wisecracking guy? Because I I I've never I, I never imagined him. Yeah. Well, the original Doctor Strange is serious, but that was also the period of time. That yeah, it was, like written because mm-hmm. when was Strange like written like in the sixties? I think yeah. like the yeah. late sixties, seventies, sixties, seventies. So you know that's basically when Marvel was kind of still. Like every every character was kind of serious. They yeah. just kind of threw jokes in every once in a while. Yeah. Kind of lighten up the mood a little bit. Like gotcha. it was kind of like in being like the Spider Man type yeah. writing where it was like there were jokes here and there, but it was generally a more serious tone book. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the volume two, I want to say that it was a little bit more jokey. And I didn't read Volume 3. Like, when mm-hmm. Volume 3 was out, like, that's kind of when I was going through, like, the stage where I was, like, basically on, like, all these other stories. You know, like, I just uh, yeah. I, I went real heavy into DC at that period of time and Dark Horse. And, you know, I, I was reading outside of Marvel. So there wasn't a whole lot that I was following. At I that got time. you, got you, got you. Yeah. All right. Shit. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, why don't we go ahead and... uh. Uh, I just want to touch real fast, actually. I was in the the comic shop the other day, and I was looking at all the little variant covers. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys have realized or if you know, but currently all the variant covers are remes of hip hop album covers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I had no clue about that except for I was until looking. When? I was looking until like until like literally like last weekend because oh, really? I was looking. I looked at the Silver Surfer joint. I was like, that looks like the Drake album. Yeah. And I was like, that's funny that they did that. Okay, whatever, whatever. But I didn't realize. I didn't look They've at the old ones while, and didn't yeah. realize it. So then I was like, I was like, they got Mob Deep, Deep, Deep Infamous joint up there. Yeah. They got all types of shit up there. And I was oh, like, yeah. this is fucking amazing. And the guy in the store was telling me, yeah, you know, all the writers they grew up listening to hip hop. This is kind of their homage to it blah 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 so i ended up actually getting the well i've had it for a while but i have the uh the agents of shield comic book that came out they had a variant cover i can't of course i can't remember who the fuck uh the album it was it was some southern rapper i'd never heard uh, of. but um but it had a uh, phil colson on there and it looked like he, he was sipping on an espresso with some like uh aviator sunglasses on i was just like all right go ahead phil yeah i only picked up one of those variant covers and it was uh guardians of the galaxy because it was um far side bizarre Ride. yeah mm-hmm. and that was the one that i wanted to pick up and then because i wasn't sure if i wanted to get it or not um was Squadron Supreme because I didn't know if I was actually going to like read the book. Was that the one with the 36 Chambers cover? The yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Sick. I thought that was a pretty cool that cover. Cool and cover. it's kind of funny because I really wasn't sure. Like, because Squadron Supreme, I really am not a big fan of that. I think yeah. That, yeah, I, like I always think it's there. ridiculous it's when, like, when comic book companies take other comic book company stuff and like blatantly put it out there yeah yeah, like squadron supreme being justice league i think that's a corny thing because marvel has so much more going for it that it doesn't need a team like that yeah you know like so i just wasn't sure if i wanted to read it but that that was a cool ass cover then the uh paid in full is it the paid in full cover oh is that uh, the one with spider-man yeah yeah that was a good one somebody had i'm trying to remember which comic it was but they had the ice cube um i want to say it was the predator album cover Oh, but I can't oh, remember I which, which one, one it was, was, but it was so sick. It was straight black and white. It was so so. The, the, sick. the, the one I liked was I think it was Uncanny Avengers with Deadpool, Captain America, and it was a cover of the Public Public Enemy album where they're all kind of like. Oh, um, uh, it's probably uh, they're all apocalypse, fisted. Apocalypse, uh, probably anymore. they're all like fisted in the middle, and they're all looking. I was like, it's probably a nation of a nation of millions or whatever that whatever that that yeah. album is called. Yeah, and that then, was one of their biggest albums. And then the, the one that you mentioned with the Mob Deep Infamous with uh, Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Faces. Yeah, that that was, was, that was really I was like, you cool. know that's Mob Deep. Come on, they look yeah. just like him. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was good. Uh, the Amazing Spider Man, the number one, was the um, was Tribe Called Quest. Uh, I think it was the Midnight. Was it Night uh, Marauder? I don't remember which one it was, honestly, but it, it but it, it had all the, the one where they had all the faces. Oh yeah, and so it has all the faces in the background, and the Spider Man's like hanging up. Oh, I seen that one. I seen it. The web. And, that that was a pretty cool. And then what's the other one I saw? It was uh, I think it was Extraordinary X Men. It was the uh, man. God. What are they called? Me, myself, and I. Uh, oh, Day uh, Soul. Day Day Soul. Soul album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Soul yeah. Album. yeah, dude. There, there's a lot of good ones. Oh, the um. 
the Captain America one that had uh, Sam Wilson with the black Oh, yeah, yeah. Black that's black that's a wrap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, they got a lot. Of, yeah, and they're still going, going too. Yeah. Yep. I was yeah. thinking of getting all of them. I was like, ah, that's too much. Uh, I, I mean, they yeah, usually like, always charge extra for variants anyway, so. That's yeah, true. I, yeah, I just can't collect like that. I mean, I, I'm at a point in my life now where it's like, I'm not collecting these things for value. I'm collecting them to read. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if this was like a... Uh, 1996, I'd probably be doing, <laughs> doing all the variants and doing all yeah. that bullshit. But anymore, Spending all type of extra money. Yeah, anymore, I'm just buying this shit to read it, you know? Yeah. yeah I mean, well, I mean, talking about Extraordinary X-Men. Oh, man, yeah. like, there you go. You, you've been on that, man, so uh, yes, how have you been enjoying that? I've, I've actually enjoyed a lot of it. Um, I think it's very interesting that they made the decision to move X Haven into Limbo. Mm-hmm. Um, what's even weirder is that, that um, they had Ileana as their only defense system. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like, okay, you think something like you keep sending her out into battle. You think, okay, she might get clipped, she might get knocked out. Shit, the bitch might get killed. Right at that point. Everybody's gonna die. Like, I mean, they already proved it. But I mean, then that is true. they it's it's. I mean, it's not really much of the different storyline from the recent ones that I I'm assuming that they've had mm-hmm. because they're you know they're taken in um not rogue but um what's the word Jean I'm looking Grey. for? Jean Grey for isn't it a past Jean Grey? For no no no. They're taken in um mutant mutant refugees. That's okay. what I'm trying to say. Oh. And um they've got all these people that they're teleporting in from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um they've got the young Jean Grey on the squad, right. they've got old man Logan on the squad, um, and then they've also got Iceman, Colossus, Colossus Magic. Nightcrawler, Magic, Storm, uh, and then you've got Glob Herman and Anno oh, as yeah. side characters and some of the others old students from the Xavier School. Yeah. Um, but we have yet to see if they're gonna actually do anything in this thing. I think maybe Herman and um and the green one, I know, will right. probably be more major players down the line. But I don't really see too many of the other students doing much of anything because I mean they've been up, they've been nothing up to this point. At least Herman and and Anno have talked have had interaction with the other X Men, have had to do stuff, have been ordered to do stuff and blah 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 blah. So right. you figure eventually they'll be on the senior team, whatever. Um I really don't like what's going on with Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand that his whole shit was fucked up by his events, but and I hope this is not a spoiler episode for y'all because y'all should have had read this stuff by now. <laughs> but uh when when Gene goes into his mind to find out what's like shaking him so bad, like I figured it would have been something that Sinister did to him. Right. But it was the fact that they, you know, he had come across this mass grave in Germany where they were just basically executing mutants and dumping them in the graves wow. and yeah. shit like that. I mean, so, it's still pretty bad. I mean, it's yeah. bad, but I mean, I didn't think it's to the point where this man would be crawled up in a corner yeah. in a fetal position, scratching at the wall. I mean, he's been an X-Men for like 50 years. Exactly. <laughs> you, think, you think he's seen some crazy shit uh, before yeah. he'd be able to like, you know, carp- at least carpent, carp- compartmentalize what the hell's going on so he can like work through it or whatever. But, I mean, like, that's really the only thing that I really don't like about that storyline really? is, like, what's going on with Nightcrawler. Yeah, I am interested yeah. to see what else is going to go on because they've already been through Sinister. They're about to go through Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. So, the Apocalypse storyline, but... Who knows what's going on What do you that? think about the artist? Because, that's, honestly, that's the main reason why I got this comic book. Um, the art. I, I like art. I like art. It's cartoony. I, I think it looks tight. Yeah, it's way different than what they've been doing uh, with, with any of the, I feel like, any of the Marvel shit recently because I figure all of the Marvel shit really since, like, the 2000s since they really started making Marvel movies right. they've tried to make it all look excessively real and yeah. I'm not really in for that yeah. I really me personally I'm really into that old like 90s like 80s and 90s look yeah. of the comics where you know you're actually looking at like something animated and it's still fun um, so yeah I do really do like the animation on this um, I, I think magic is really uh, going to be an important character in this series uh, because of the fact that they hold so much of importance on her and what, what she's doing for them right now. Right. Um, I also think that somehow Jean Grey and, of course, Old Man Logan are going to pay play big roles for this whole thing, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, personally, I could have done without an Old Man Logan, but I guess what's an really? X-Men team without Wolf Dude, Green I on there? Think, and you know what's funny? I actually think Logan as an old man actually works. Yeah, I, I mean it I works because he's got it. the old man crotchety yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's just an angry old man well. now. But I mean, it's just like I, I, I just, just think it's weird how he just appeared. 
Like, he yeah. just popped up, like, walking across the tundra. And they were like, oh, look, it's Logan. Where'd you come from? Like, yeah. nah, there, there, kind of there might be some background behind that in another series or something. There might be. But yeah. another thing that really bugs me, and I mean, I don't really know how people are with it, but, like, the bringing of the teenage X-Men to the future... I thought that was stupid. stupid. I really yeah. thought it was stupid all the way around. And then to keep them there, so that there's two sets of all these motherfuckers running around. Well, yeah. almost all. There's two Icemen running around. There's two Beasts running around. So there's wait, not two Cyclops so, anymore. So, so, so the Iceman that's in this series, is he the young one or the old one? Uh, in this one, it's the old one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the Iceman of our continuity. Okay. But now, of course... Since the other one came and, of course, you know, jumped out the closet when he got here. Right. Like, this Iceman's all fucked up in the head about it. And it's just like, I don't I don't know how to do it. And this, everything's so confusing. I'm just like... But then, then I'm reading the other all-new X-Men and you've got young Iceman doing the same fucking thing. So yeah. it's just fucking annoying on both sides. It, that, that's the one thing that... That's why X-Men kind of lost me. Um it actually lost me with the old, the all new X Men um, mm. when they when they ran that run, and I know that that's one that's like you know it's kind of critically acclaimed. You know, a lot of a lot of people review it pretty high and they enjoyed it, but honestly, it was, I can't I, just, I can't say that I really weird for me. Yeah, like, like I, I just didn't like it. I'm about five. I think I'm four or five deep into this now. I think mm. five, and I'm just reading it, and I'm not really liking storyline. I don't. I'm not. I'm not digging right here. No, no, oh, no. This extraordinary yeah. X Men. Oh. Great. I love this one. I'm talking about all new X Men. Oh. And I guess I, I, I. Unless you guys have anything else to say about extraordinary. No. no. Wait, wait, wait. Who's in all new right now? Which in all new X Men, you've got young Cyclops, young Iceman, young Angel, and young Beast. Plus Kid Apocalypse, the new Wolverine, which is X twenty three, and then Edie Owokono or whatever her name is. Is that the one you're talking about? The on you? Yeah. I, yeah. I can't get into this that. is the one I'm not really feeling because first of all, I don't. I mean, the fact I don't know what's up with Angel and his wings made of fire. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. But I mean, it, he doesn't. He hasn't done anything with them besides fly. So I don't know if he can do anything with like them. Like a female Wolverine. Yeah. It's is a that X twenty three? Yeah. It's X twenty three. I don't mean like cause she's, she's the new Wolverine. And that's why, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but I mean, like this series, it it just doesn't. It's not doing anything for me. I think I'm just gonna give up on it because it's, honestly, it's. Just I didn't even know that anything. series existed. Like, I, you know, what <laughs> I, mean? I didn't even know that. That's like I said. Man, I like. I don't know, man. Marvel's doing a bunch of dumb shit. Well, that's the thing. I, I yeah, it, like that. I I didn't get into, and, and the same thing with like uh, Amazing Spider-Man. You know, everyone jumped on, on that, and I honestly got it because of. The, I'm a I'm a Spider-Man fan. We've talked mm-hmm. about that before, you know. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man was one of the characters that got me into comic books, mm-hmm. and so I really wanted to get the Amazing Spider-Man because everyone was saying how great it was. Um, <laughs> I picked it up and I got about three four issues in, and honestly, they've made Peter Parker a mix between like Tony Stark and Batman. Like he's got like a spider mobile and he fuck? like has Parker Industries now and like he's a global he's got this global company and all this other See, bullshit. I, no. it's like See. It, it's like that's I don't want that Spider Man. You know what I mean? Like now, uh the Ultimate Spider Man and I don't know what they're calling it now, I think they're just calling it Spider Man number one, the mm-hmm. one with Miles Morales. Yeah. I actually read that and I thought that was excellent. Like I think that that's I'd much rather get into that Spider-Man book than the Amazing Spider-Man. I've, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of good things about the My- Miles storyline, yeah. about what's going on with that book. So I might actually have to check it out myself, and I'm not even that big of a Spider-Man fan. Yeah, no, that one's good. But, yeah, so you're not really feeling a lot of the stuff that Marvel's doing right now? I mean, like, female Thor, you know what I mean? And some of the new characters, like Miss Marvel, is like this teenage chick that can stretch. And, like, female, like, new Wolverine and... All these characters are just so different and just so I don't know, man. It's just well, stupid. I, I'm not I'm not against the Jane Foster um the Jane Foster Thor thing because I actually have read the books because I mean my daughter who's four years old is a huge yeah. Thor you know, she's a huge Thor fan. And uh, of course because now Thor's a girl, she really even wants, bigger. She, yeah. yeah, she's even I'm sure that's why fan. they changed it because right. obviously they and, want I mean, to, we have to the female. We, we have to censor it when we read it to her because you know course, it, yeah. it, it has the stuff in it. But the stories are pretty cool, you know. The stories so what happened to Thor? Cool. Like Honestly, what happened to the the real Thor? Where is he? I didn't read that. I didn't read the the arc that led into it. But basically, he couldn't lift it. Yeah, yeah. Lift I, the hammer I, I any longer. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. And then 
a female four came out of nowhere and you didn't know who it was for yeah, a while yeah and she lifted it up and i mean the story was really cool because malketh was in it and he was working with the like uh the frost giants and the frost king and they okay. were coming in to take over asgard and then oh so they took so, it back to the basics with yeah like so so it, it was a good story man I, I thought it was a great story thor loses his arm you know, mm-hmm. like uh, I mean, honestly, as yeah, long as do. I don't really care if they, you know, they want to change a character, no. if they want to, you know, change a storyline, whatever they want to do, as long as the storyline is good. What I don't want to see them do is change something and then just have it be absolute bullshit. Right. So, like, if like I like I said, I haven't read any of this new Thor, but as long as her story is good, mm-hmm. you know, I I really don't give a damn. Now, if her story is crap and everyone's complaining about it, but yet they're still pushing it just because she's female Thor. Then I'd have a problem with it, right? Absolutely, and that's where I I I have the problems too. Is like when when things are changed for the sake of changing it, I can't get into that. Yeah, like, I just think it, it's pretty dumb. But if they give a good backstory to why it's being changed or what's being changed of it, yeah, then it's pretty cool. Um, at least it's acceptable, right? Or if it or if it's working, if the change has worked, and I don't know why. Like a, a prime example of it is like <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. I picked up Guardians of the Galaxy now. I didn't read any of the um, Brian Michael Bendis um, Guardians of the Galaxy. when the After the movie came out, I read the da- uh, Dan Abnett series mm-hmm. because the Dan Abnett series is basically the characters that they based it off of, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I read that. Um, I didn't read any of it, so I didn't know what to expect picking up this book, the fact that they changed up the team. I picked it up, but I like the tone of the book. Yeah. And I like the way that the storyline's going. Mm-hmm. So I can accept the change of the team. And yeah, it's like Venom, the light in there. And like, you know, it, it's random. And now Thing is part of the Guardians of the Galaxy and Kitty Pride wow. and Star Lord. and what the, the fuck is she doing in space? Yeah, well, the, and she's. But then again, Peter, Kitty Pride and, and like, Star Lord did have a little miniseries thing. Right. I remember and, seeing that. And they're. T- and they're together so, you know, that, so that's not bad what i'm talking about is a pregnant spider woman comic book that's it's like retarded. that's what i was like I don't get that. all this shit is dumb dude that, that, i feel dumb. like a lot of this writing is just bullshit dog. yeah i don't um, like it right i mean right now i have a good amount of of marvel books that I'll, i'm following invincible iron man is one that I, i've been enjoying um are you still following that yeah i am actually you know you remember how i said i was gonna drop yeah, off of that yeah. book and then um and then I actually picked up. I was gonna drop off of it because they had him like attacked by ninja robots. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is like, I was like, this is a straight up like nineties. This is like nineteen ninety three. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't have anything else to do, so let's bring him back the old ninja robots. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I'm done with this shit after this book. And then, uh, and then I think that the book after that ended up having. Um, it ended up having uh, Doom come back okay. in it. And I went to the comic shop, and and the guy that I usually talk to at the comic shop was like, oh, are you still reading this Iron Man? And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and he was like, oh, did you is- not see the Ninja Robots? <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And he's like, dude, he's like, oh, no, you got to check out the new one. So I picked it up, and I was like, I'm I'm back in it. So I, I'm good to go. I'm reading Weird World. I think Weird I just like Weird World because I like the world. I like the way that they, I like yeah. the way they present it. I like the way it's drawn. I, I like the, it, the art in that giant style. I think it's really good. Guardians, I'm reading. Um, Rocket Raccoon and Groot, I'm reading. Yeah, I, find yeah. I almost picked that up. Also, it's Scotty Young, dude. Yeah. I, I love Scotty Young. I, I, I think it I think it's a hilarious. Book. How many issues is There's it? There's only two issues. Two so issues. Two? So yeah, so it's not too far behind. And then Doctor Strange, and that's pretty much yeah. it for Marvel for me right now. I think I'm I'm on five books right now. Well, besides so, Extraordinary like, yeah. X Men and Doctor Strange, I also have been reading Uncanny X Men, which I don't really have too much to say about it because it's only three books in. That's but, a weird team, um, isn't it? Like, it's, a, it's a weird team. Yeah. It's like Magneto's leading it. It's got Saber, Psylocke, Saber Sabretooth, uh, Mystique is on it. Uh, like it's just an odd team. So I don't really know what to make of it. Uh, I, I I think it's gonna take a few more books for me to do. Yeah. But they're apparently trying to save all mutants that have healing abilities because someone's trying to kill them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. But I'll I'll have more to say about that on another time. Mm-hmm. But the only other book that I'm reading right now that I'm actually like still debating on whether I want to be interested in is Scarlet Witch. Okay. And I actually really really like the fucking artwork on it. I think the artwork is pretty cool. That's just like old school electric shift. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty. I like I really do like it. Uh, the storyline 
it starts kind of out all over the place and then it kind of comes to, okay, this is what I think I have to do, blah, blah, blah. Now, one of the weird things, of course, is that she doesn't seem to use her mutant powers at all in the course of this. She is a pure witch at this point. She is not using mutant powers whatsoever. Uh, she also has to deal with the price of, uh, using magic as all mages do, Mm -hmm. but her price apparently comes in the form of her sanity. Okay. So that's why she's all over the fucking place as a whack job. That's pretty cool. Uh, and it makes sense with why she goes crazy and does the whole M day shit yeah. and all that other shit because she'd been expending all types of magical energies right. with, about, with apparently not paying the piper for it. Um, she comes to, she has to go to Ireland and she fights some, the Minotaur, a uh, mythical beast who turns out to be some like second tier bad guy who's been transformed by someone with all, with all types of power. Okay. Then she has to track down this Irish witch demon thing who wants its revenge on somebody's bloodline and has literally been going throughout the generations, killing off everyone in that person's bloodline who like trapped them or did whatever, whatever it was to them that they felt that they needed to get this vengeance. Vengeance. Okay. And um, he finally like gets around to killing the last person. So apparently this is the person that the witch is going to have to go after at one point. Again, it's only three books deep. I'm still not sure on if I'm rocking with it 100%. But I like what I've seen so far. But I also... There's a couple things I don't like. Like, she's got fucking Agatha Harkness following her around. And it's Agatha Harkness's ghost. And it's like it's like having an annoying bitchy aunt or like mom like following you around. It's like she does nothing but seem to get on Wanda's last nerve. <laughs> like, well, do, they, do they even like explain why? I mean, apparently, she's like her her guiding essence or whatever. You know, she was her her tutor in the magical arts while she was alive. Okay. So I mean, maybe they have that connection. But yeah, she's kind of like almost like a spirit guide. Mm-hmm. She helps her out with some stuff, even though she's pretty much useless and can't do a lot. But I mean, she's still got a lot of. I mean, she's pretty coherent. It's like she's a current ghost. Right. That's, That's weird. Uh, I mean, the cover art on all three of those books are pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah like, it's real, different. Yeah, it, it's that like... I really like the yeah. cover art for for issue number one. I think that's really sick with the city underneath her yep. and everything. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I really, like I, like I said, the artwork is, is phenomenal, even all throughout the book. Um, but we'll see where it goes. So those are the ones you follow in Marvel? Those are the ones that I'm following in Marvel currently right now, yeah. Uh, let's see, what am I, what the hell am I following? <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'm following Rocket Raccoon and Groot, mm-hmm. um, Doctor Strange, Uncanny Avengers, which yeah. has Deadpool, old ass Steve Rogers, some random ass characters, <laughs> Quicksilver, Rogue, that, that, I mean, that book's okay. Where did old ass Steve Rogers come from anyway? Like, the, 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 I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't read it, but I, I guess this serum fucking... Who fucking knows? <laughs> <laughs> they just made it just to make it. Now, Sam Wilson's the new Captain America or whatever, but... Yeah. The, the book's all right. You know, I just got it because it's just a random cast of characters. Um, It also... It, it kind of connects with um another one I'm following, which is Black Knight. Okay. I follow Black Knight because I just wanted to get into somebody new that I have no idea who he was. Right. I, mean, I was I about did, to say, why Black Knight? I, I did, I did, I did, I've read some comics when he was in the Avengers back in like, it was like the mid-90s, hmm. where, where he used to wear like a the actual, pilot jacket. Like, <laughs> right, yeah. And, but he's cool, he's actually in Weird World, that's the thing, like, he's in Weird World, okay. Uncanny Avengers try to get him because I guess he murdered somebody, but he, he wields this sword that's making him go crazy, and that's pretty much what's going on so oh, far. Oh, that's his normal sword. Yeah, that is yeah, go crazy. I remember he, he was in. Um, shit. This is, I guess it was the third run of Excalibur, okay. and he was in that squad for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And um, they said so, they made reference to something about his sword driving him crazy, but yeah. he was the only one that could wield it anyway. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I thought that one's pretty good. I thought Howard the Duck, yeah, which is okay. I mean, it is what it is. It's 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 like a quirky like Howard the Duck has like a like a sidekick who's who's a scroll, but he's. The scroll is in the form of like this teenage, I don't know, Spanish chick with tattoos. <laughs> and <laughs> dude, I don't know, dude. It's, it's Howard the Duck. <laughs> that's exactly, it's that's Howard what I'm saying. So right now, he, he's, he's like, apparently he became like the, the, rea- the nexus, like, where you can, I don't know, man, and like strangers after him, you know, Galactus wants him, Collector wants him, and there's a female how there's a female duck now and a female rocket raccoon that are helping him out. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, it, it, a lot of shit's going on, and then of course I think the last one I follow is anything that has Deadpool in it. 
I follow any mini series yeah. where he was like with cable, with it, you know, the whole time travel thing. I follow him with like just everything. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, I'll, I'll buy any Deadpool comic, dude. Like recently, his 25th anniversary just happened, so he had a 25th anniversary comic that was like 10 bucks, 10 fucking dollars. And, I, and it was funny, <laughs> half, the, half the shit in there, it doesn't even have Deadpool in it. Oh, wow. Because the thing is, right now, he has a group of, he has a group of people, of mercenaries, and that's the team. Okay. Which consists of like full killer, slapstick, solo. Uh, I forgot the other guys. Slapstick. slapstick Isn't that like the, the animated like, yeah, exactly. Cartoon so they all dress up He's like an assassin now. Yeah, they all dress up like Deadpool and they go around and Deadpool pays them to go. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Wow. But like, but the 25th anniversary issue has uh, separate stories for each character. Okay. So I don't know how I feel about that. Exactly. Um, but I mean, but it's funny because since they're a group, they're all kind of like Deadpool. They're all jokey and. I think it's cool, but yeah. other than that, I mean, that, that's that's pretty much all I follow. Well, one that we uh, left off the list that I was just thinking about is Power Man mm-hmm. and Iron. Yeah, that, that, that just came out not this past week, but the week before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I got on. It's actually kind of funny because, you know, I've always been a big, um, I've always been a big uh, Power Man fan, you know. Yeah. Uh, I even followed the Cage comic book back in the 90s. Yeah. Um, so I, I was definitely interested in picking that up when it came out. I've always liked Iron Fist. Um, so it was weird because I didn't even know that this book was going to come out. Yeah, it, I just saw an ad for it. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I follow uh, Sanford Green on Instagram. Okay. And, you know, he always draws up these sketches that are really cool. Okay. And when I saw the first sketch that he dropped for uh, for this comic, I was like, damn, you know, like, I wonder if they're going to make it into a comic book. And mm-hmm. then that's when I saw him put out the cover for it. That tight. And I was like, all right, I like his art. So yeah. I'm, de- I'm definitely going to go out and pick it up. And I'll be honest, for the first, for the first story, I thought it was really cool. <laughs> you know, like they go, like, uh, Jenny gets out of prison. Yeah. You know, they, they go to track down, uh, what was it? A necklace, right? Because that's what she wanted, right? She asked him for a favor. She asked him for a favor to go and retrieve her necklace. They go and they run into Tombstone, <laughs> and uh, they end up getting into like this big ass combat with Tombstone. Yeah. Uh, they retrieve the necklace, get it back to Jenny, and you find out that Jenny was actually a bitter bitch. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they left her. They left her in a prison cell, and so. She's working with Black Mariah as the uh, new supposed villain. Yeah. This. So it, it's gonna be a. I, I think it's gonna be an interesting, interesting book to follow. Definitely, dude. I, I you know, I feel, I, <laughs> I feel like Power Man and Iron Fist. I mean, obviously they've been together for a long time, but I, yeah. I still feel like that's such a weird duo. Oh really? You know what I mean? Because it's, it's like Cage, you know, kind of like guy from the streets with Danny Rand who. Does kung fu and you know what I mean? It's just hey, the white guy with the shack. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, them, you know what I mean? Dollar store Chinese but that's what I'm saying. But like for them to come together, and I just say I don't know. I think it's fucking interesting as shit. It's and, an odd couple. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's tight because it, it, it's not it's it's not like mystical and it's not out there. It's more like street level brawling and it's just simple stories, easy to follow. And yeah. I think it's fucking sick. I, I like it because I, I feel like it's one of those like in-between reads. You know, like if I'm on a story and, and the story arc gets like, like it starts getting a little bit too much, like I, I feel like you that know, one breaks it down a level. A break, you yeah. Know? Instead of grabbing a break, I grab Power Man and Iron. Man and Iron, you know, it's, it's a good, good tempo changer. So yeah, no, I think it, I think it's a good one. Definitely, you know? and I mean, speaking of Iron Fist, you know, they just announced who Iron Fist is going to play in the Netflix show. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Finn Jones. Something like that. I don't know, he's one of the actors from uh, Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah. And when I saw him, I was like, oh, thank God he looks like Iron Fist. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Thank God he looks like Danny Rand. Because I don't know if it's a rumor, but I heard people wanted him to be Asian or something. And I I'm, feel like a lot of people, like I know one of my friends was disappointed. Uh, she, she was saying that she was disappointed that Iron Fist wasn't Asian. And I was like, well, you know he was white to begin with. Right. She was like, I know, I know. But I mean, I thought it would have been a cool thing for Marvel to do is to make him Asian and blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, I mean, like, I, honestly, I don't, I could care less. If, if he was Asian, as long as the story, like I said before, as long as the storyline was good, I'm cool uh, with it. Like, I really don't give a damn. Uh, well, let's be honest, though. In this PC bullshit world that we're yeah. living in these days, where somebody 
if, if they had made wow. Iron Fist Asian, there would have been an uproar about it. The people would have been. And like, why you gotta be like, Asian? Gotta be Asian. Kung Fu? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> it's all about Kung Fu? Come on, man. Exactly. Nah. Leave, leave Danny Rand with his shag. <laughs> get, him out, get, him out there, on, get him out there in the mask. Yeah, come on. And have him kick ass with power, man, because Luke Cage is a beast. They, and, and you know what's cool is they had, uh, they actually had Jessica Jones in. Yeah, she was in, in that giant. Issue. She was in that giant. Um, so that, that was really cool. I, you know, I, I, I like it, man. I think it's a. I think that's a good book. It definitely is. And I mean, I have to check it out then. Going going back to the, the, there's another character who was a heroes for hire, who's a Asian kung fu guy. I don't know his name because I could never pronounce it. But, heroes for hire. Yeah, heroes for hire. He he he. Back in the seventies, a comic book called like Kung Fu Master, okay. and he's the character, and he's a Marvel oh, you know, heroes I, for hire. I know character. which one. I know. He looks like Liu Kang, basically. Yeah, I, I, I've se- I can see yeah. it in my head because I've seen the. So show. you know. That's definitely an opportunity for Marvel if they want to to bring him in because he, he he always interacts with Iron Fist or Power Man. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? They got characters, so yeah. all Marvel has to do is just put them in them and make them popular. I mean, absolutely. And so. right now's the time to do it because I mean Marvel's riding that high wave that they can yeah. they can basically put in any character right now. <laughs> And I swear that they will become popular. Squirrel girl. <laughs> did, did her comic book not become popular and shit recently? And you know what's funny about it? Her comic book became popular and the art is ugly as shit. Yeah, the art looks like something you'd see garbage. on Cartoon Network and like yeah. for like little children. Like it is, it is garbage. <laughs> that's one of those that's one of those things where it's like I'm a big like I'm like you Kuba. I like a good story. You know, like for me, a story is what hooks me. But let's let's call it what it is. It's a comic book. The pictures got to look good too. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, I'm yeah. Not, I can I can pick I can get over some ugly artwork if the story's really really Hell good. Hell yeah! But if you're bringing me some like Dark Knight Two type bullshit. You know, where it looks like this complete and utter trash. You know what? Like, you don't like the Dark Knight 2? Dark Knight 2? No, Dark I, I Knight 2 like... was like ugly as fuck, dude. That was the one that looked like, uh, I don't even know what the hell they were doing. They were smoking some good drugs, though, and they, <laughs> they threw that bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I get it. Like, you know, the art is weird, but I kind of like it. I, really? I, I thought it was like I thought it was different and dark. You know, it's kind of weird, but yeah. No, nah, I get it. No, nah, nah, I, I understand. But yeah, that that squirrel girl thing, man. Yeah, I, squirrel girl. I, I, I could, no, yes. I could get first, that. first of all, I've never understood squirrel girl as a character. Yeah. Then I never really understood her appeal. Mm-hmm. And then when I when I heard that she went up against Thanos and won. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. So she beat Doctor Doom apparently by getting all these squirrels on him. Yeah, and I like, was like. What? What kind of sense does that make? Doom can lay waste to the Fantastic Four, but he goes down to Squirrel Girl. I refuse. I refuse. Yeah, that, and that, that's like know, a joke. It's like a parody. Yeah, movie. that's the it's thing. Like, like the, the parody comics. Like for me, I enjoy for parody comics. What you were talking about is Howard the Duck, because it's not serious. Mm-hmm. But Howard the Duck's not going to beat Galactus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. they won't have they they don't put Howard the Duck in these storylines where he's like whooping people's ass. Yeah. Howard the Duck gets by being Howard the Duck. You yeah. know, like yeah, when, nah, when he gets over on a character, it's in a Howard the Duck type of, of way. Of course, yeah. You quack foo. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Quack foo, dog? <laughs> if y'all could see me on video, I have my head in my hand. <laughs> quack foo. But it's true. It's really true. <laughs> If y'all don't mind, I want to switch gears a little bit. Go ahead, man. That's good. Because we, we usually, you know, it's kind of by default because most of us do read a lot of Marvel. Um, yeah. I that mean, is very true. I mean, System is pretty much strictly Marvel. I'm pretty much the one that reads mostly mm-hmm. all over the place. And I got to say that I'm, you know, I'm getting real heavy into Image Comics again. And... uh you know, image for me right now, like the big two are always going to be the dominant. You know, like I, I know that mm. it's always going to be Marvel, it's always mm. going to be DC or your one or two. Very true. But image is putting out some really good stuff right mm. now. Um, they have Rick Remender, and I actually got Miguel or System Psycho. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I got okay. Psycho to start uh, um, reading Tokyo Ghost. Yeah. And Tokyo Ghost is an incredible story. Um, he's also writing uh, Low. Um, you know, he, he's got so many good books on there, and it's like he's not just leading it. You know, you've got Walking Dead coming out with new books again. 
uh, Chu has come back now. Spawn is putting out new mm. books again. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, Spawn, I, thought, I didn't even know Spawn stopped. I didn't either. Yeah, there was like a little period of time oh, where bro. there was like a little hiatus there. But um, Jonathan I mean, Hickman... Do that. Jonathan Hickman's there doing East of West, and you know mm-hmm. Jonathan Hickman just left Marvel after doing um, this year Secret Wars. Wars. Uh-huh. So we'll see if he drops more under uh, Image. Um, you know, I mean, I know I'm leaving out a lot. I mean, there's the goddamn. There's there's a lot of good books that Image is putting out. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. I mean, anybody right now that's uh, looking for new material or or, or new mm-hmm. books to read, I would definitely check out what Image has to offer because, I mean, they're, they're coming on strong. And I don't know if it's maybe just because, like, you know, now as an adult, you know, back when I was a kid reading Marvel, I always read Marvel because it was it was character heavy. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I always read DC because it was story heavy. Mm-hmm. And, and that was kind of the appeal of those two. And when I got into Image Comics, it was really I got into Image because I was a teenager when, it came, when those books came out. Yeah. So, like, Spawn was like this fresh idea, you know, and it, and it was different. And and Savage Dragon, mm. I was a I was a <laughs> yeah. Ninja Turtles fan, you know what I mean? So like Savage Dragon was like, oh shit, I'm gonna check this out, um, you know. And that was the initial appeal to Image. But now as an adult, it's like I'll read Image comics, and there's a little bit of everything, you know. If if I want something that's like a serious tone, like. There's a book that I'm reading now called Black Magic, which is mm-hmm. about a female detective who is uh who's a witch. And oh, it's just okay. a weird it's a weird story, but it's not like a witch like it's not like Scarlet Witch witch. It's yeah. like, you know, like in a real life type way kind of witch. Like a wiccan. Yeah, like a wicked. <laughs> a type wicked. Of thing. Yeah, like like it, and it's just a weird like like it's a weird way to put that out there, but it's a good it's a good story, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know they they got stuff like that, um, you know, and then Chew, which is a little bit lighter of a story. It's okay. about like a, a detective who has psychic ability by eating things. Oh my god! So like he can eat things and like basically solve like murders. So like he'll eat. Parts of his vi- of like the victims, oh, you know, to be able to find out how they were killed. It's like yeah. edible psychometry. That's terrible. Yeah, dude, it, it's it's a crazy. It has been it's been going on for a while now. But Chu ha- has some really good books. Um, East to West is awesome. I mean, yeah, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there. And, and one in particular that I'm reading for people that want something that's kind of on the funny side. Scotty Young, who writes Rocket Raccoon mm-hmm. and Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Uh, he actually is illustrating and writing. It's called I Hate Fairyland. Yeah. And I Hate Fairyland is a little girl who got trapped in fairyland. Well, in fairyland, you go and you're supposed to find a key that brings you home. <laughs> and it's supposed to be over a day. Okay. Well, she's been stuck there for like 20 some odd years. Damn. And Find she's going fucking crazy. And she still looks like a little girl. And so she goes through and massacres like this whole fucking land wow. trying to find her way out. And there's a lot of funny shit that goes on in it. It's really funny. It's um, like sick and twisted and demented, but still cool at the same time. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and if you get the uncensored version, it's called Fuck Fairyland. Are you so, yeah, yeah. So it, it looks like I'm getting that incentive now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check it out, man. It, it's a great book, though. But you know that I, I just kind of wanted to throw image out there because you know I, I know that um, for you that follow us and follow the comic stuff that we've done. You know, we do stay pretty heavy on Marvel, but, mm-hmm. you know, we do read Marvel's Marvel's the best. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so one of the things about Image, right, I mean, when you think of Marvel or, or even DC, not that they don't have any of this stuff, but you think of what? Superhero books, right? Just yeah. Straight superhero. I mean, yeah, DC has stuff in Vertigo and different types of shit. And, I mean, so does Marvel, but mm-hmm. it's mostly superhero stuff when you think about those those two. Yeah. But, like, Im- Image took a different route. You know, when he first started, they came out with superheroes. You know, they got Savage Dragon. You know, they got Pit. They got, they got um, the Max. They got Spawn. But now, 
they took a different route in the sense that it's not just superhero books. You no. know, you got East to West, what Josh mentioned. You got Tokyo Ghost, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's just different shit. It's, yep. it's like the, the one you spoke of with the detective that's a witch. And, you know, and so it, it's kind of it's kind of different in a different angle than Marvel. And the other ones are just superhero books and dudes with tights and powers and Ooh, shit. Right. Where if you want something different, you can go to Image because it's completely different. And, and same thing with... um. Kind of like IDW, where their whole thing is kind of like doing retro, like Ghostbusters or Ninja Turtles. They kind of yeah. get like, you know, properties that are already established and they create comic books. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's what I think of when I think of IDW. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so Image is, is something completely different where it's like they have everything, honestly, if you really want to look for it. Yeah, absolutely. So... That's what, you know, image, image is tight, you know, they, they got some good shit if you're into it, so you just gotta, you just gotta, like, you know, research it, yeah. and look it up, man, so. Hey, sounds like everybody's got some work to do, everybody's got some reading to do. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> but I guess we'll go ahead and cut it off here. Uh, as always, guys, thank you for uh, for listening. Please like and share and subscribe. Yeah. Also, leave some comments, yeah. uh, leave some reviews. We all appreciate yeah. it. You can find us on SoundCloud, yeah. YouTube, uh, iTunes, Stitcher. We're man, we're Instagram. all over the place now. Instagram, my house. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we we be all over the place, son. Just come find us. You know where we be at. We be in the same place all the damn time, son. You feel me, dog? Yeah. Anyway, this is Kuba for the Combo Crew. We out this bitch. Peace. Peace. Peace.